Okay, welcome back. This is take two of this because last time my mic was not recording. So uh, let's get into this. So uh, yeah, I really, really like making little mansion interiors. And um, to do that, the best way is to have a bunch of props and walls you can choose from and you can build your scene out from there. Um, so I was looking at this scene here because it's just simple enough, um, but also complex enough to look nice. And uh, ooh, this one's pretty cool too. So yeah, um, let's get into trying to model a little something like this. So I'm going to hide these. I'm going to be working with textures that I already built in these files, um, but I tell how to make most of these uh, kind of textures in my other little making material tutorials, so you can check those out. But I'll give a little brief uh, info on what the like images I'm using are and stuff. So let's get into this. I'm going to make a floor, which is just a plane in this case. I'm going to tab into edit mode. I'm going to scale this up nice and big. And we can just keep it square for now. We can move the walls around where we want them. I'm going to go to shading. And I'm going to add in just a nice little floor texture here. Now, what this is, is um, I have this floorboard seamless texture, which I'm running through a color ramp to give it this uh, coloration here. Um, I might actually want this to be a little bit more on the orange side like that. And then I have it running through a bump map to give it bump and through a color ramp like this to plug into the roughness to make it so parts of it are reflective. I am going to start making a wall now. So um, I'm going to shift A, add in another plane. I'm going to tab into edit mode. I'm going to do R, Y, 90 to rotate it 90 degrees like this. I'm going to drag it up along here. And I'm going to S, Y to drag this out like that. Just make a nice long wall here. Um, I'm gonna take this top, GZ, bring it up. Let's make it nice and tall. I kind of, I kind of want to go for something like this, of so a nice round mirror like this, and these little parts that come out. And it's not too difficult to do actually. Um, let's just take this here, and actually, I want the edge select. I'm going to do loop cuts. I'm gonna make one in the middle and I'm going to control B to bevel this out. It's maybe about here. And I'm going to make this just so it's the cut like this. So you can see in the reference that like, there's kind of panels on either side and there's this big part with the fireplace that comes out and then the fireplace itself sticks out even further. So let's do something like that. Um, I'm going to take this, oops, shoot, S, Y and drag these out just a little bit more. All right, I'm going to go to a mode where we can actually see what I'm doing like this. I'm going to Alt-E, extrude faces along normals, bring this out a good amount like this. I am going to go back and add another loop cut here. It will be make a little space for the fireplace in here. Um, yeah, that looks about right. You might even want to make this just a little bit wider like so. And I'm going to add it in a cut here, which will be the fireplace is going to go in here. The mirror is going to go up here. Um, and I'm seeing the ratio of fireplace to wall here is like one to one to two. So that's the height of the person. I might bring this down a little bit. So it's more like this height and that looks a bit better. Um, okay, let's see. Let's go in here. Let's get rid of these faces because they don't need to be here. We'll get rid of these faces because they don't need to be here. It's basically if a face isn't going to be visible in the camera, you can get rid of it. I'm going to alt select this top uh, edges here so I can drag this up just a bit higher. I want this to be nice and tall because if you look here, it's like this is the size of a chair. So a person standing up is probably going to come up to like here ish. So it's like two and a half, three people tall maybe. So this looks about right. Okay, um, let's add in another cut up here. Because again, we've got this lip that's gonna come around. And I'm going to add in another cut down here because we're gonna have the baseboard. Now, um, I let's see, I'm gonna tab out of edit mode. I'm gonna move my little armature over to this side so I can have some sort of reference here. 
I'm going to select this, Alt-E, extrude this out to make a little fireplace. I'm going to get rid of this bottom face here. Take these. Um, I'm going to just add in another loop cut and bevel this out so I can have the sides here and add in one more and bevel it up to here so I can have the uh, top. And you can see what I'm going for here. And um, I can actually make take these faces and make them into a little lip of their own, but I'll do that in a sec. So I am going to, let's see, this looks about right like it is. Um, sorry, I'm bouncing back and forth a lot, but I want to make sure I get this pretty much right. I'm thinking, yeah, okay, let's just go in on this. I also, I'm going to select all this. I'm going to SY and just scrunch it down because I made mine a little too big. I'm going to take these SY and drag them this way a little bit like that. I'm going to take this whole um, area here and I am going to bring it back just a little bit like this and take these all E extrude long normals and make that little lip that comes out. And these I'm going to all E extrude back like this to make the actual fireplace. I'm going to delete that. And then let's see. Let's, um, well, actually, even though I just did that, I'm going to select these two edges here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to bridge edge loops here to make a little area. And I'm going to select this whole inner part, this whole this whole bit here. I'm going to fill that. And now I'm going to select this inner wall here. I'm going to SY and like make this come into itself like that. And then this is where things get really wild. I'm going to shift add. Let's do a cube. I'm going to drag this out this way. Scale this down, position this about on the floor. Um, I'm going to, let's see, keep this selected, snug this in here. I'm gonna make a little kind of column for this. So I'm going to bring this in like that. And then I'm going to I to inset and bring this up. I'll eat extrude, I'll eat extrude out again. And I'm going to scale this out. And then, um, Going to bring it in again. I'm going to bring it up here, make this a little bit wider, bring it up more, bring it in a little bit, and keep it kind of straight here. Bring it up and out, in, and then up one more time, and then out big like that. And just make it go up in here. Um, and then you can delete that top face, and you can delete this bottom face. Okay, I'm going to select all these edges now. I'm going to control B to bevel, and I'm going to change the off offset to percent here um, so that it's equal, and I'm going to just bring up the number just a few times so it's like this. I'm going to bring this in, kind of snug it up against like that, and I'm just going to shift D to duplicate this, bring it over here, all right, that looks pretty cool. Um, let's see. That looks good. That looks good. Yeah, all right. That looks pretty decent. Might drag this down a little bit like that. Cool. All right. Let's, uh, let's see here. Let's get the big pieces out of the way. So I'm going to bring these down just a little bit like that. I'm going to select all these Alt E extrude face along normals and extrude this out. Now you notice these are shifting, they're kind of at a skewed angle, so I'm going to select these two and I'm going to X or S X zero to straighten them along the X axis. X axis axis. There we go. Jesus. Alright, I'm going to do the same here, like that. And I'm going to bring this back a little bit so they're a little more all uniform, like so. And now, um, let's see. We don't really need these faces in here, I believe. And we don't need 
this like up here to be a thing as well. So I'm just gonna go through and um, I'm going to select these and just X faces. Select this one, get rid of that too. And let's see. I'm going to add in another loop cut up here. I'm going to select these all E extreme long faces. I'm going to do kind of the same thing here. Looks good. Select these SX0. Select these. Oops. Come on. SX0. Looks good. I'm going to select all of this. GX. Make it uniform. Great. <coughs> um, now that we have that, I'm going to go in and add a little extra detail. I'm going to select this. Control B to bevel. And instead of keeping like this, I'm going to bring the shape down to zero so it bevels in like that. I'm going to do the same thing up here like that to give it just a bit of an extra fancy looking, uh, fancy looking trim. Um, okay, I'm going to do the same thing down here with this. So I'm going to select these, Alt E, extrude them out. Um, I'm going to select these. S X zero, select these S X zero, and all right. Let's see. So we're gonna have the geometry is going to be um, intersecting here. So I'm going to make sure to have this face and this face selected. You can just delete those up because they don't need to be there. It's just geometry sitting on top of geometry, and we don't really want that. Um. Okay. I'm gonna go through. I'm gonna select these. And I'm going to select this, oops, like that. Control B, bevel them. That looks pretty cool. And I'm going to make a little extra bonus one along here. Let's see. You can do all these, I guess. Extrude them out like that. Let's do a bit more. So extrude it out like this, nice and big. SX0. SX0, SX0, and then these SX0, and then SY0, and SY0. I'm going to go through, I'm going to alt select the whole bottom here, control B, bevel it nice and uh, nice and big. Hmm, not sure how many to do for this. Might do like four or something and fix the shape so it slowly slopes up like that. That looks pretty cool. Um, I'm going to add an edge loop here, an edge loop here. I would probably be better to use a texture for like render time of panels because I want to make these nice, cool panels. But uh, just for the heck of it, I'm going to I to inset these. And right now I have single set inset on or single object inset so basically if you normally if you inset it will you know inset all faces are connecting i'm going to press i press i again and that will inset all the separate faces so i'm going to do that and um just a little bit like this and i'm going to let's see select all these vertices. I'm going to control shift B to bevel them and make it nice like that. I'm going to go offset so they're all the same. And I'm going to change this to be back to 0.5. And so this, they have like a tiny bit of roundness on them, so not a lot. So maybe make this like two and make this distance like 0.4. Something like that. And I'm going to I again to inset them. Is that a good idea? Yeah, that'll work. Just a little bit. And I'm going to G, X, and drag them back in themselves a little bit like that. And then I'm going to Alt E, extrude along normals, and inset them like that. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to give these faces kind of a similar treatment. Um, I'm going to 
I to inset, like here, control, or shift control B to bevel those vertices, like that. Looks good. Select these faces. I to inset again, inset them a little bit. But that's not gonna work because if we try and move them like that, it's gonna move like this. If we try and move them like this, it can move like that. So in this case, the best case I think would be to all E extrude along normals, extrude them in, change uh, the transform pivot here to individual origins, and then scale them all in just a little bit. And then let's see, all E extrude in again, just a little bit like that. I think that will work. Yeah, I put this back to medium point. And now we just have that big mirror in the middle. So um, this shouldn't be too difficult to make. I'm going to let's see. I have, ooh, interesting. I see that this one is intersecting this. So I'm gonna actually undo those just a little bit. I am going to, let's see, do we have this selected? Alt E. Extrude along normals, extrude them in just a little bit. Uh, individual origins, scale them in a little bit like that. Um, scale them along the Y, scale them along the X. So they're about even. And we're gonna just leave these like this. We're not gonna inset or extrude them in again. Okay. For the mirror, I'm going to extrude this whole thing in a little bit and then pull the mirror back out so i'm going to extrude this in um and then i'm going to add in an edge loop here control b to bevel take down the number of cuts maybe bring it out to about here do that again control b to bevel so we have the edge of the mirror here and it brings up to here and up to here I guess this actually goes all the way up. So my my bad. We're gonna bring this up to the top. Um, let's see. How's the best way to do this? Hmm. I might eat my words on this. I might actually suggest that we take this top edge and this top edge. We just bevel the. Ooh, that's not gonna work. Um, okay. Desperate times call for desperate measures. I'm just going to add an edge loop in here. So it's not going to go as far up as it does in the actual picture. I select these, control shift B. Uh, make this nice and big and nice and round like that. And um, let's see. I'm going to go through and just unselect the vertices that are along the actual edge flow that we want. So these ones here and keep everything else selected. And I'm going to try and delete all the ones that just aren't necessary here. So I'm going to do X, oops, like that one, X, dissolve vertices like that. And um, yeah, all right, let's, let's work with that. Um, let's see, I'm gonna take this Alt E, extrude this back in like so. So now the mirror sticks out on its own. I'm gonna take this Alt E, X, ooh, interesting. Take this I, inset this. But I don't particularly want, I want a little bit down there, maybe not too much. I am going to grab this face specifically and just drag this down so it's less so than the others. I'm going to Alt E extrude this back within itself like that. I'm going to select all these faces except for the bottom one. And I'm going to I, but double I so that way it insets everything. Extrude this back in like that. And that looks, that looks all right. Um, for the sake of fanciness, I might actually see if it's possible to duplicate this, bring it up here, 
scoot it back into this kind of little corner here. Put it in the middle. Let's see, that could, that could be kind of cool. And just stretch it out. No. That's dumb. So this is part of this is part of what these types of models is. You kind of have to you reach a certain point where it's like it looks decent, but then you gotta go through and be like, okay, what can I do to like make it look fancier than it really is? Because like we're basically just trying to fake the fanciness for the most part. Um Okay. Let's just start throwing some textures at this because uh it's looking good enough to work for now. Um okay, this has a lot of wallpaper which I don't really want to focus with so I'm gonna give it more of this kind of thing where it's like cream colored walls with some gold trim so yeah let's get into that so I already have here a white wall which is the principal BSDF and with kind of a pinkish yellow color on here and everything else is the same so what I'm going to do actually though, is I'm going to select everything. I'm going to deselect these panels that we made. And I'm going to give everything, oops. All right, actually select everything like this and go back through, deselect these. You have to excuse me, I've been using Maya for the past while, so I'm used to Maya controls applying in Blender, which they just don't. Okay, and I realize we need to delete these at some point, but that's okay. I'm going to add in a new material here. I'm going to assign this to here, call this gold trim. Make sure that's the signs. All right, and let's see. We want these to be that same white wall, so I'm going to just preemptively unselect this so it's not gold as well, because that's going to be very distracting. Um, position that here. Okay. For that gold trim, let's go ahead and put this in kind of an orange yellow here. We're going to bring up the metallic, like so. I'm also going to turn on auto shade smooth just so some of the stuff looks a little bit better. And I'm going to bring down the roughness so it's a bit more reflective. And I might tint this so that it's a bit less like in your face because these are very solid. Well, actually, no, these are kind of deep gold. They're just not that reflective. So actually, I might bring the roughness back up, keep the metal metallic high and then make this like a deep, it's almost verging on greenish, but that looks kind of gross. So I'm gonna keep this kind of a deep orange for now. Um, again, we'll be adding wood and stuff to this, so it's gonna look better. Um, okay, let's select this, put it the white wall, and um, I'm going to go to this view, Alt-Z, so I can select everything, select all this stuff, and... Um, this is going to be a wood texture, so I'm going to add a new one. I already have the first wood we used, so I'm going to just assign that. Let's see how that looks. I'm going to also select this uh, row of faces here, assign that to the wood as well. Like this. Um, I'm going to take the time right now to just select the top of this X. Oops, these. Uh, delete faces, take this, take this, delete faces. Um, let's just select all this. UV editing, let's see how it's lined up. Okay, so that's not terrible, but it would probably look better if we rotate it 90, so um, this follows the groove like this. All right, that looks all right. I'm going to go back to shading and I'm going to select, let's see, this and this. Let's put this as wood. That looks pretty good. Um, hmm. Some of these places have a lot of gold. I only really want the uh, areas directly circling to be gold. So I'm going to select all, hmm, okay. This is where things start to get a little bit annoying when you have to go through and just select 
all these faces, but it really pays off if you take the time to do this. So let's just go through. So I'm going to just circle select all these faces that shouldn't be gold, and we're going to give them a different material. Um, like the wood or just something to offset it because otherwise it's just a lot of gold. It's a lot to look at. It's just too much. Like this is the richest mansion of all time if they have this much gold on the walls. Um, so let's see. Go through here. This is where modeling starts to get a little bit tedious when you just have to go through and just kind of power through knocking out these big sections of um, texturing. So probably for our sake, let's see, I might cap out here and just assign these to wood so you get what I'm talking about. So like I probably want to do something like that so it's just a little bit changed up or even just assign these back to the good old white wall. Uh, cause that'll help a lot. So, uh, yeah, let's just, let's just knock the rest of these out. Um, one thing you have to keep in mind with these mansions is that they are fancy, but it's like, you know, it's just kind of unrealistic to have a bunch of very thick gold everywhere. Like if you look at the picture, it's just little accents all over the place. Like there's not a lot, it's just little bits of trim. So, um... We don't want to make ours be unrealistically pimped out, so to speak. So I'm going to assign this. Um, so definitely with these, I would advise that less is often more. So I would go light on the gold to give it little accents, but really just be subtle with it. Like you don't, you don't want to assault people's eyes with the amount of gold you can throw at this. And that's an important thing with all of just any CG um, environment or anything that's computer generated is like, just cause you technically can make it look a certain way, it doesn't mean you should. Like I could make this whole room be chrome for instance, but it's just not gonna look very good at that point. Like it's, it's gonna look like a joke. Like, so I wouldn't want to do that. I would probably want to make most of it be plaster or wood. And even the wood is like going to be fancy too. So it's probably going to be wood accents of plaster. Honestly, when in doubt, go with the plaster and give accents of wood. And then few are sometimes even no accents of gold. Like a lot of times with these, I'll start with gold. I'll end up taking it out and replacing it for wood because just the gold, again, is very fancy and sometimes it's just too much to look at or just feels un, um, like unpractical. So now that we have all these selected, oh shoot, that's not what I meant to do. I'm going to white wall them like that. That looks a bit better. Um, let's give this mirror material. So I'm going to do new, sign, plus mirror. And this is easy. You just turn up the metallic, turn down the roughness, just make it the perfect mirror like that. Let's see, what else can we mess with? I want these to be wood. So I'm going to sign this to wood. You Q projects. Actually kind of looks nice like that. I may not change that. All right, um, this is a lot of gold on here too, so I'm going to select these and I'm going to do wood again, cube projection, select the bottom here, select this as well, wood, and ooh boy, that's not what I meant to do, um, okay. select these separately, call them wood. Um, let's select the top of this here. Let's give it wood and cube projection. I'm gonna select all of this top part here. I'm gonna call this the white wall again. I select the inside of this mirror, white wall. And um, this may be looking a little too white, 
I might try adding in a wallpaper of sorts. So let's try it with this one. Like this, select the white wall, cube projection. Um, let's just select all this, five. And um, what I might do is I might make, take the white wall, duplicate this material by clicking this little double page button here. And on this one, I'm going to take this off. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all these, assign this to this, and then select all these panels. Um, and I'm going to assign this to the one with the wallpaper, just to change things up a little bit like that. Now, this is, um, this is looking a little weird. I don't know if I like this blue color. And if at the very least I want this color to fit the white of the wall itself. So let's see. Um, let's try and make this a bit more yellow like that. That looks pretty good. I might take this, take a color ramp, plug it in here. Um, we'll make the color here, let's see. Right now it's black, which you probably don't want. So I'm going to brighten this up and then we can make it be any color we want. Pink might look kind of nice. That could look kind of fun or like an orange. I don't know, somewhere in there, maybe a red. And we can ease that off a little bit. And then this side will just make kind of a similar cream. Something like that. Yeah, it's looking kind of cool. And you can just play around with all the stuff. Like all the stuff is stuff you can just easily play around with. But then the fun thing is, once you have that, it's just right in the middle here. So you can move this around anywhere you want. Like here. And you can Alt D to duplicate it. RZ 180. And move this over here to break your other wall. And because of this, you can like edit both at once, which is pretty cool. And then with that, then you have two walls done. And it's very, very easy to go on from there and make the third wall and then make the ceiling. So that's what we're going to do next time. But for now, this will do it. And I will catch you in the next one.